What's happening, y'all? Welcome inside the Fantasy Stock Exchange. Bush coming at you solo today to break down my must-start and must-sit wide receivers for Week 10 of Fantasy Football. This is where we break down every single wide receiver matchup. We go through every game, talk about the spreads, talk about the wide receiver cornerback matchups, the game scripts, everything that you need to know to properly set your lineups at the wide receiver position for Week 10 of Fantasy Football. We're in Week 10 now, so crunch time approaching for the Fantasy Playoffs. Definitely got to stay sharp on the usage and the matchups. But as always, before we get into it, if you guys enjoy, feel like you receive some value at any point, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and leave any start sick questions down in the comments, and I'll get to as many as I possibly can. But let's get into it. All right, so here's the matchup chart for week 10. You guys can see some of the more difficult matchups are the Tennessee wide receivers, the Washington wide receivers, C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup on the Cowboys, the Minnesota wide receivers, and then mostly Alan Lazard on the Green Bay Packers. And then some of the easier matchups are a couple of the guys playing tonight, Carolina and Atlanta, both with easy matchups at the wide receiver position. Michael Pittman Jr. on Sunday, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs wide receivers, the Saints wide receivers, etc. So let's move into the first game, which will be happening tonight on Thursday Night Football. Falcons at Panthers. The Panthers are two and a half point uh, dogs at home, 42 and a half point over under. Sharps are on the over 51% of the money right now. Start DJ Moore in this game. You can flex Drake London and you can low end flex Terrace Marshall Jr. DJ Moore had a monster game the last time that these two teams played a couple weeks ago. And the secondary is equally as decimated as it was back then. AJ Terrell not expected to play Casey Hayward on IR. It looks like another fireworks show in store for DJ Moore. His 62 point five over under on underdog fantasy is practically free cash right now. And I'm definitely going to be laying some money on that. If you guys are running some pick use code FSE as always. Uh, but DJ Moore's teammate, Terrace Marshall was actually a big talk of waivers this week because he's sneakily been solid the last few games after being pretty much a bust the first year of his career and first year and a half of his career. We'll see if this continues for Terrace Marshall, but he has a solid matchup against the Falcons. He's just inside my top 40 at wide receiver. He's commanded 14% of his team's targets, 26% and 20% the last three games, and he's finally running a full complement of routes. We'll see if this kind of materializes. It's smart by the Carolina Panthers coaching staff to finally get this guy on the field because, I mean, he's a, he was a second-round pick just uh, in 2021, hasn't seen a lot of playing time, and you got to see what the kid has. So definitely a guy that's interesting for you know DFS lineups this week and for people that are you know down bad with bye weeks. I think Terrace Marshall is a solid guy to go after. On the other side of things, we have Drake London, who's still a solid buy low, in my opinion. I feel like a broken record talking about him every single week, but I'm just not going to bench a guy who has a 29% target share. I know the Falcons don't throw the ball, but they're facing a bottom 10 pass defense in my model with the Carolina Panthers this week. We saw a lot of points in this matchup a couple of weeks ago. Maybe the Falcons only throw 24 pass attempts like they usually do, but those attempts could be much more efficient than usual in this game. So fire up Drake London as a top 36 wide receiver and buy him low for those of you guys that are looking to trade for somebody. Uh, you guys can see the wide receiver cornerback matchups on the screen, but we can move on to the next game, which is, I believe, the final 9.30 a.m. game that we're going to have all season. For, this, uh, for those of you guys on the West Coast, make sure you either get up early or set your lineups before you go to bed because it will be 6.30 a.m. for you. Seahawks at Buccaneers. This game is actually taking place in Germany. Counts as a home game for the Buccaneers. They're three-point favorites as a result. Start the, the big two receivers on each team, right? At wide receiver, we know who the guys are. We know it's Evans. We know it's Godwin on the Buccaneers. We know it's Metcalf. And we know it's Lockett on the Seahawks. The way I'd rank those guys, if you had multiple of them on your team, would be Evans, Metcalf, Godwin, and then lock it. We know what these two pairs are from a usage standpoint, but matchup wise, this is setting up to be potentially disappointing all around. A lot of the money is on the under in this game. And Mike Evans and Chris Godwin face the two rookies who've played very well in coverage, uh, Tariq Woolen and Kobe Bryant, but I'd trust them to be solid as usual. They get a lot of targets. The Buccaneers throw the ball a lot, so they should be just fine. The Seahawks on the other side of things um, get number two graded corner Jamel Dean for DK Metcalf for most of his snaps and the Bucks secondary returns to the starting three that they've had for the first time early in the season, because when the Buccaneers were playing very well, they, you know, stomped the Cowboys in week one. They played really well in week two. The three starting corners that they had out there are the guys that are out there right now. Jamel Dean, Carlton Davis, and Antoine Winfield Jr. in the slot. And they haven't had those guys all on the field healthy together pretty much since week two, week three of the season. So the under is where I lean in this game, because I think the Buccaneers defense is going to show up heavily 
Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf, not an ideal matchup for them, but still solid starts as top 24 guys. But we can move on to the Broncos at Titans. Titans, two and a half point favorites at home in this game. You can start Jerry Judy, flex Cortland Sutton, and keep an eye on Traylon Burks. You're not going to start him if he plays, but definitely keep an eye on him. Jerry Judy has been the primary target for this Broncos offense over the last few games, and he gets a corner in the slot who is allowing a 92% catch percentage. So even though this game is probably the most disgusting over-under I've ever seen of 36 and a half, and the under is actually getting most of the steam right now, I'm not really excited to start a lot of players in this game outside of Jerry Judy because um, with Jerry Judy, you're getting a guy who has been very productive the past couple of weeks. Russell Wilson's starting to play a little bit better, and it looks like Jerry Judy is his go-to guy. Cortland Sutton's a fine flex play, I suppose, but again, not a very high game total environment to be firing up a bunch of pieces in this game. The Titans really have no fantasy relevant wide receivers until Traylon Burks gets back on the field. He was designated to return from IR this past Monday. So send out some offers for him. He could be a guy that is uh, very fantasy relevant down the stretch, but I, even if he plays in this game, he's probably not going to get a full allotment of snaps. You guys can see the matchups on the screen as well. The Broncos secondary is just too strong for the Titans to be able to do much of anything through the air, if I had to guess. So moving on to the Browns at Dolphins game. In this game, a lot more exciting for fantasy. 48 and a half point over under. I think this game has shootout written all over it. So the guys that I'm starting this game, obviously the main wide receivers, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, and Amari Cooper, all inside my top 12 on the week. And if you got to flex Donovan Peoples-Jones uh, with all the bye weeks that we have this week, four teams on bye, I think you could definitely do worse. Both the Dolphins and the Browns defenses rank bottom 12 in my model against wide receivers. So neither of these teams are good at defending the wide receiver position. Also keep an eye on David Bell because he just had the highest PFF grade of his career of the season so far right before the bye week. And then they got the bye week to give him that post bye rookie bump that we always look for for rookies. So definitely keep an eye on him. He could be a decent stash after this game if he has a big game or something like that. Like I said, I do expect quite a lot of points in this one. Tyree Kill facing primarily, you know, Greg Newsom and Jalen Waddle. They, these guys split coverage on the outside, so not really relevant wide receiver cornerback matchups for them. Xavier and Howard probably going to be all over Amari Cooper in this game, but he's been up and down this season. I think Amari Cooper can definitely do some work against him. Moving on to the Jaguars at Chiefs game, another game with a high total, 50 and a half points. In this game, you can comfortably start Juju Smith-Schuster. You can comfortably start Christian Kirk as top 24 wide receivers. Both of these teams have a bunch of randos that you could theoretically throw into your lineup at any point in time. And this game has a an over-under above 50. So if you had to throw in Zay Jones because you're desperate, if you had to throw in MVS because you're desperate, if you had to throw in Kadarius Toney, I don't think it's terrible, but I would probably wait to start specifically Kadarius Toney until he's on the field for more than 9% of the snaps, which is all he ran in terms of uh, routes last week. I would probably wait for him to get up near the 50, 60, 70, 80% range before I throw him into my lineup, and you'll probably have to leave him on the bench to do that. With Christian Kirk on the other side of things, you're trusting the targets because he has back-end wide receiver two type of target share, 24% target share on the season, consistently getting you know six, seven, eight targets a game. It's just that this offense and Trevor Lawrence specifically kind of limits him to like a high end wide receiver three because they're just not very efficient overall. Typically, they're just kind of nickel and diming their way down the field. And Legereus Sneed is the guy that Christian Kirk is going to see in coverage, who is the best corner on the Kansas City Chiefs and plays primarily in the slot. So probably a difficult matchup in store for him. But Juju on the other side should be very solid. Moving on to the Saints at Steelers in this game, 40 and a half point over under. Not a great game total. Steelers are one and a half point dogs at home. Uh, in this game, you could start Chris Olave. You can start Deontay Johnson. I think you can flex George Pickens as well. Uh, Chris Olave is just a stud. I, I don't really have to say too much about him. 27% target share as a rookie wide receiver. He's getting into some elite company when it comes to like dynasty projections for Chris Olave because, you know, being that productive at this young of an age as a rookie wide receiver is very, very impressive. But on the Steelers side of things, I talked about it before the buy that I'd like to see them maneuver their receivers around a little bit more. Now that Chase Claypool is gone to the Chicago Bears because they traded him away. And I want to see Deontay Johnson moved into the slot occasionally. I want to see George Pickens moved into the slot occasionally. I want to see Pat Fryermuth, their tight end, who's been very good this year, moved into the slot occasionally because Claypool had been their primary slot receiver. And I think they can get a lot more creative with their offense. But again, we're talking about Matt Canada here. So it doesn't look like that's going to be likely. Deontay Johnson is actually one of my favorite buy lows right now. I didn't talk about him in the trade targets video, but I definitely could have. 27% target share. He hasn't scored a touchdown yet this year, despite having a 31% share of the Steelers end zone targets. So this is a guy that's getting targeted down there. He's just not cashing in on those opportunities. He also has a 33% air yard share, which is top 20 at the position. And the Steelers passing game, I think this is why he's a great buy low. 
they just played a murderer's row of defenses. They played the Jets, the Eagles, the Buccaneers, the Buffalo Bills in four of their last five games outside of the Dolphins game. And in all in those four defenses are all top five in pass defense DVOA. So what we're talking about with these defenses is a tough matchup for a rookie quarterback. Now they have, you know, easier defenses coming up. They have some tough matchups in the next two games, but Atlanta, Baltimore twice, Carolina, and Las Vegas are their matchups weeks 13 to 17 during those money weeks, those playoff weeks that I know you guys are going to be excited for. So Deontay Johnson, a great buy low right now. Like I said, 27% target share in an offense that should be improving with a rookie quarterback now facing some easier matchups going forward. So Moving on to the Lions at Bears. I think this one's going to be very, very popular from a DFS perspective. 48 and a half point over under over is 93% of the cash right now. I think you can fire up and buy low on Amon Ross St. Brown and you can flex Darnell Mooney in this game. I broke down on yesterday's trade targets video why I think Amon Ra is a great trade target right now, but 31% targets per route run for a player who's finally getting healthy, strung together two healthy games in a row. Now he finally has a good matchup against a Bears pass defense that is not very good in a game where the steam is all over the over. He is definitely going to be in an alt receiving yards parlay for me because I think Amon Ra could get really, really back on track in this game. I also think given the game total, if you wanted to fire up Chase Claypool, I don't think it's terrible. If you wanted to fire up a tertiary, you know, Lions wide receiver like Khalif Raymond, because you have a bunch of bye weeks, I don't think that's terrible either. But Darno Mooney is the main guy that you want to start outside of a Monroe St. Brown in this game. He's kind of like Deontay Johnson from the same perspective that I talked about. He has a high target share, just not a ton of pass volume available, not a ton of yardage available due to how Fields operates this offense, which is primarily with his legs. He's getting a great start this week against the Lions defense that is probably one of the worst, if not the worst, pass defenses in the league. So I think the Bears could definitely hang some numbers in the passing game on the Lions this week. But either way, I'm very excited for this game. I think this one's going to be really, really fun. Moving on to the Vikings at Bills, and this game would have been really, really fun if it wasn't for the Josh Allen injury because you know we have a 43.5 point over-under, which is brutal to see because I think potential shootout 50 plus point over under would have been the case according to Vegas if Josh Allen wasn't dealing with this UCL injury and it looks like Vegas expects him to be out given the point total in this one but you can still start Stephon Diggs you can still start Justin Jefferson no questions asked I would probably just downgrade the other two guys Adam Thielen and Gabriel Davis probably like low-end flex plays rather than the like high-end top 25 type of wide receivers that they would have been had Josh Allen been playing in this one. For Gabriel Davis, a 13% target share can work from Josh Allen because his targets are so valuable and there's, you know, all these downfield targets. But when Case Keenum's throwing you the ball, a 13% target share is probably not going to get it done. Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen have a tough matchup against the Bills pass defense, which is one of the best pass defenses, if not the best pass defense in the league against fantasy football wide receivers. So not an easy matchup all around. The under in this game is actually getting quite a bit of steam, assuming Josh Allen is out for this one. So uh, moving on to the Texans at Giants, and I will not spend a lot of time on this game. 40 and a half point over under. Both of these teams have gross wide receiver cores. I don't really need to waste too much time talking about this game. If Brandon Cooks actually plays for the Houston Texans, then he's a fine wide receiver three this week. And as of today, he was seen participating at practice. And I think you could do a lot worse than Brandon Cooks in your flex spot. And I also think you could do a lot worse if you're desperate flexing Wandell Robinson as like a top 45 wide receiver. But otherwise, just avoid this game like the plague unless you have Saquon Barkley or Damian Pierce. Moving on to the next game, which is the 4 p.m. games. And Fair warning, if you guys don't want to watch the 4 p.m. games this week, I would not blame you because there's going to be a lot of bad football in this window. We, I would love to fire five out of the six teams in this window right into the sun and not have to watch them play football for the rest of the season because uh, Colts Raiders is the first game that we have here. Colts just fired their coach. The Raiders can't seem to win a game to save their lives. But in this game, you're definitely starting Devontae Adams. And I think you can flex Michael Pittman Jr. as well. I would not be surprised if... Uh, Stephon Gilmore is Adams' personal chaperone. He sees shadow coverage against him, and that probably downgrades Devontae Adams quite a bit, but he's still in your lineup as a top 12 wide receiver. The Colts are hell-bent for some reason on trying to lose. I, I mean, I know what the reason is. They want a quarterback, but as long as Sam Ellinger is the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, Pittman is by no means a must-start. I know there was a point in time where we thought Michael Pittman might be a top 10 wide receiver this year. And if Matt Ryan could just start playing better, he could actually realize that potential. But Sam Ellinger, number one, is just not throwing the ball enough for Michael Pittman to be great. And number two, isn't a good enough quarterback for Michael Pittman to be great. So I think this game seems destined for grossness, not a game that I'm very excited about. And speaking of grossness, we have another shitter bowl. Cardinals at Rams, two teams that, again, I would love to fire into the sun and never have to watch again for the rest of the season outside of, I mean, the Cardinals have great pieces on offense, but 
Kyler Murray and the offensive play calling is just so such an eyesore that it really irritates me. But in this game, you got Cooper Cup, who's in your lineup. You have DeAndre Hopkins, who's definitely in your lineup. And I think you can flex Rondell Moore as well. We know what DeAndre Hopkins is. Uh, he's a you know 50% target share guy at his best, a 30% target share guy at his worst. That's what he basically does for this Cardinals team. But Rondell Moore has really stepped up in the absence of Marquise Brown. He's been a top 20 wide receiver over the last four games. So definitely a productive you know flex piece if you guys need to throw Rondell Moore into your lineup. But Hollywood Brown will be coming back soon. He put out on his Instagram story that he's going to be back in the next couple games. So I would probably sell high on Rondell Moore while you can, which is what I talked about in the trade targets video yesterday, but he definitely is still a great flex in this game. I also find it hilarious that Cooper cup was the like regression guy coming into the season. And yet he's literally the only guy that's productive on this Rams offense. The only guy that we can trust on this Rams offense. I think Allen Robinson has been a complete bust signing cam Akers, Daryl Henderson, all these guys. I don't think you have to start any of them. Cooper cup is this offense. And he's pretty much the only guy that I feel comfortable with starting for the Rams. So moving on to another game that uh, with one team that I would love to fire into the sun Cowboys at Packers, the Cowboys are a good team, but the Packers are not. And the Packers are somehow only five point dogs at home in this game. And I think the Cowboys are going to run them out of the building. Personally, in this game, you start CD lamb flex, Alan Lazard and low end flex, uh, Michael Gallup. Gallup's getting solid usage and it just hasn't really translated to the box score yet. He's also not playing very well because he's coming off an ACL tear, but I still think he's a half decent stash for those of you guys that might be like nine and O or eight and one or seven and two send out some offers for Michael Gallup, because once he starts to get healthier throughout the rest of the season, I think he can actually be very productive. And I think this Cowboys offense will probably have a strong back half of the season as well. Uh, the Packers defense is really tight against wide receivers in general. So could be a run game type of focus is a lot of Ezekiel Elliott, a lot of Tony Pollard, which is you know what I expect probably the game plan to be for the Cowboys because CeeDee Lamb and Michael Gallup will have a tough time getting open against the Packers corners, although they did just lose Eric Stokes for a couple games. Um, on the other side of things, we have Alan Lazard, who is the clear number one in this offense, but this Cowboys pass defense is brutal against fantasy wide receivers. They are very, very good at defending the pass, and the Packers just laid a turd against the easiest pass defense in the league. So what are they going to do against the Cowboys, who are actually a good pass defense? Definitely not a great situation. So definitely not a good situation for the Packers. Uh, I think the Cowboys, like I said, are probably going to win this game handedly, but we can move on to the Sunday night football game. Chargers at 49ers. This one's kind of fun, I think. 45 and a half point over under, but the under is getting a lot of the steam. In this game, you can start Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, and you can probably flex Josh Palmer. Now, very, very unfortunate knowing that Keenan Allen was held out of practice yet again on Wednesday. He looks like a completely sunken draft pick. I'm, I'm, I apologize for those of you guys that drafted him in the third round because I really did like this guy coming into the year. He was my highest owned wide receiver in Best Ball Mania 3. So I am feeling the brunt of this as well. Keenan Allen is, is pretty much just a lost season right now. He's been dealing with a hamstring injury since week one. He's re-aggravated it pretty much uh, documented at least twice so far. So he's been very, very cautious with this injury. I, I would just stay away from him. I, I, he was once a buy low for me, but I don't think I would touch him with a 10 foot pole at this point in time. Debo Samuel is still firmly on my buy radar though, because even though he's dealing with a hamstring injury as well, he practiced in full yesterday on Wednesday, which is very good news because typically when somebody's not hundred percent, they won't practice on Wednesdays. They'll practice Thursday. They'll practice Friday or something like that. But good news for Debo coming off of the bye week fully back to practice. He's fully healed from the hamstring injury and the chargers are bad against both the pass and against the run, which obviously we know Debo Samuel is very good in both aspects. Brandon Ayuk also had three great games right before the bye. So he's also a top 24 option for me this week. I like the 49ers to probably win this game handedly, but um, we'll have to see. The Chargers are kind of feisty as well. Um, but moving on to the final game of the week, Monday Night Football, Commanders at Eagles. Not a great you know Monday Night Football type of game. Eagles are 10 and a half point favorites at home. In this game, you can start A.J. Brown. You can start Devontae Smith. And I think you can flex both of the Washington Commanders wide receivers, Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. We also might get Jahan Dotson back for this game, but we'll have to wait and see. Terry McLaurin has firmly regained the wide receiver one role for this team since Taylor Heineke has been the quarterback. He's been dominating the targets. He's been dominating the air yards. He's pretty much been dominating everything. But this matchup that he has this week with Darius Slay will likely be a tough one. It downgrades him to a flex play. Curtis Samuel, again, like I said, also a solid low-end flex type of piece. But this Eagles pass defense is very, very strong. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith on the other side of things could be a high-powered, high-flying type of offense for them. The Eagles passing game could lay a haymaker on this commander's wide receiver core because they are a bottom five pass defense in the NFL, especially against fantasy wide receivers, which is basically most of the damage that gets done against them. So AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, absolutely in your lineups for the week. So this is the end of the video. Like I said, 
If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Comment any of your thoughts down below if you want to take some of this advice into action as I kind of plug throughout the video. Underdogfantasy.com. Using the promo code FSE, you'll get 100% back on whatever you put in. So that's promo code FSE. Link down below in the description. You can do some hires. You can do some lowers for tonight's game. You can do some hires and lowers for Sunday's games. Whatever you want to do. So appreciate Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring the show. Check out our Patreon, which will be linked down below in the pinned comment as well for access to all of our rankings, for access to you know first dibs on Dynasty Decisions. All that good stuff will be linked down below in the pinned comment. Uh, but with that being said, peace out, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Why you need the money?